In the face of tragedy like this week's condo collapse in Surfside, Florida, where rescue uh, conditions continue, those operations around the clock, people are prone to wonder why a loving God allows suffering in the world. Joining us tonight to try to help answer that question from First Baptist Church of Dallas, Fox News contributor, Pastor Robert Jeffress. Pastor, great to have you with us tonight. Thank you, Shannon. You flagged something that um, our wonderful team, our researcher Grace, went back and pulled this um, from Lee Strobel talking about this in the Christian Post. It said, if you could ask God any question and you knew he would give you an answer, what would you ask? So Lee Strobel asked the Barna Group Research Organization to conduct a national survey among people across the spectrum of beliefs that asked that hypothetical quote, question. By far the number one question that people wanted to ask God is why he allows pain and suffering in this world. I would imagine you've had to walk through this with scores of people over your time of ministry. So what do you say to them and to these families down in Surfside tonight? Well, you know, that question uh, is many thousands of years old. You know, I think about in Luke 13, uh, Jesus was talking to a group of people about another accident in his day, a great tower, the Tower of Siloam that fell and killed 18 people. And, and the Jewish people wanted to know, why did God allow that to happen? Interestingly, Shannon, Jesus never answered the why question, not because he didn't know the answer, but because he knew it was beyond our comprehension. And I don't think we ought to offer pat answers like this tragedy in Miami and try to explain what God hasn't explained to us. What we can say with confidence is collapsing buildings, sickness, suffering, these were never a part of God's original plan for the world, and they won't be a part of the world that God's going to recreate one day when the Lord returns and vanquishes suffering forever. Until that time, Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have trouble. Mm. I love what one writer says, the Bible never diminishes suffering suffering, but it does add one word to it, temporary. What we feel now, we won't always feel, and that's the hope of the Christian message. Yeah, the AP says this headline, Jewish community prays for miracles after condo collapse, and you heard the husband, now his wife is missing uh, yeah. there, and, and he talked about that they have a strong Jewish community and faith there. He says, um, they, they quote a rabbi there and say, it definitely needs miracles because the circumstances are very, very grim. That was Rabbi Shalom Lipskar. He says, from the synagogue, everybody knows somebody. This one's like one big community, so there were a lot of people that lived in that building, and it's gonna be a very tough week. Um, I would imagine as horrific and heartbreaking as this is, as the hours, the days tick by now, uh, it sounds yeah. like there is a strong spiritual community and a lot of folks there in that synagogue know and love each other and will be able to hopefully comfort each other. Well, and as this rabbi well knows, you know, God specializes in miracles. But you know, a lot of times people get uh, the wrong idea about faith. Faith is not some positive thinking mumbo jumbo that God's gonna magically do what I want him to do. Uh, faith, I tell people, means boldly asking God for what is in our heart, in this case, a rescue, but then quietly trusting in him to do the right thing. And one thing we can know for sure, Shannon, is even when we don't understand, even when we don't see God's hand, we can always trust his heart. Mm -hmm. I've seen that in my own life. I know you have probably many, many times over in your ministry as well. Thank you for offering some comfort tonight, Pastor. It's always good to see you. Good to see you, Shannon. Thank you.